remember I said sometimes if you struggle to focus for that 25 minutes, that Pomodoro, it might be because you are so used to doing so many different things, you've actually forgotten how to concentrate. And the Institute of Psychiatry, the London Institute of Psychiatry said that those who are distracted by emails and phone calls saw a 10 point fall in their IQ, which is twice that found in studies of smoking marijuana. So twice the fall of that found in studies of people smoking weed. And that is because most people are doing something called attention splitting rather than multitasking. And I've explained this one before as well. Um, attention splitting is when you are trying to be on social media, have a conversation, write your essay. You are trying to process cognitively too many different things. That is not multitasking. That is attention splitting. Think of your brain like a CPU processor. You are putting so many programs onto the computer. Of course, it's going to suddenly go, I can't do it, cannot compute. Buffering. That's what you're doing to your brain. Multitasking is when you are doing something with the cognitive processing, so having a conversation perhaps, and exercising, which is physical. Or it can be when you're listening to music or watching television and washing up. Again, mental, physical. That's multitasking. And the problem is, if we learn to split our attention so much, and we have been learning to do this because that is what social media does, the little zing, the little beep, the little bell that turns our attention away, then we have already learned the mental habit, remember, we've already learned to be distracted. It is mental habits that make up our behavior. And here, the evidence is more than half of the participants said that they would respond to an email immediately. Remember again, an email, somebody who's not in the room, and they would leave a meeting to do so or interrupt a meeting to do so. So they'd interrupt the experience they were having to respond to somebody who isn't there, who doesn't know what you're doing. Who doesn't know you might be on the toilet or, or flying or something like that? If you're that worried, put on an out of office reply. Um, and also constant interruptions can actually have the same effect of the loss of a night's sleep. And you might think, actually, I've pulled an all nighter before. It doesn't affect me too badly. No, it doesn't. But it can become a habit. That's one thing. But the other thing is research has shown it doesn't necessarily affect your written work, but it does actually affect your performance work. So they studied architectural students and they found that those who didn't get a high quality sleep, they would perform just as well as they would normally on a written exam, but their presentation was less focused, was less effective or uh, as less good compared to how they would normally perform. This is why I certainly try and get a good night's sleep before delivering webinars, just because that is the performance skill. So it will affect you. And also, if you start getting used to it, in other words, your brain starts forming the habit that you go to bed really, really late or that you pull all-nighters, then you can actually lose the ability to start sleeping at a regular time. You can win it back. You can unlearn that bad habit. It just takes time. 